Horns up and welcome to a brand new episode of Headbangers Kitchen and horns up if you love cheesecake. Now I've done a recipe or two for cheesecake on this channel. I've done a delicious lemon and strawberry cheesecake. I've done a berry swirl cheesecake and you can click here on the i button and watch those recipes. But I've never done a no bake cheesecake. So for all my viewers who don't have an oven, today we're going to be doing the most incredible and delicious no bake peanut butter cheesecake with a delicious chocolate ganache on top. Oh yeah, it's going to be incredible. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get cooking. Oh, and you remember a couple of episodes ago we made some peanut butter cookies? Click here on the i button and make those because we're going to need it for this recipe. So the first thing we're going to do for this recipe is make some brown butter and we're going to get a saucepan on the stove and put in about 75 grams of salted butter. You can also use unsalted butter, no problem. And now you just want to let the butter cook. It's going to melt down and the milk solids are going to separate and then they're going to start to brown. And that's what's going to make this delicious brown butter. Now of course you need to keep an eye on this. Keep stirring it. You don't want the heat to be too high because it can go from brown butter to burnt butter in no time. So keep stirring it. Don't get scared if it starts to froth up. Take it off the heat if you need to every once in a while. Keep stirring it around with a spoon or a spatula and once that turns a nice golden brown just pour it out in some kind of a dish and let it cool. Now for the base of this cheesecake we're going to be using those lovely keto peanut butter cookies that we made. Now there are a couple of ways to deal with these cookies. One just put it in a bowl and with the blunt end of a rolling pin just smash the cookie and powder it up. The other option is to put it in a ziplock bag and then bash it away with the rolling pin. And the option I prefer the most is to put the cookies in your food processor and give it all a good blitz. Once it's blitzed up, I'm going to take it out in a bowl so that you can see what I'm doing. But honestly, you can continue this process in the food processor. Anyway, into this goes two tablespoons of Dutch processed cocoa powder. You can also use regular unsweetened cocoa powder, no problem. Give that all a good mix and make sure it's all well combined. Now because the cookies are already sweetened, I'm not adding any additional sweetener to this. Anyway, once you're done with that, pour in the brown butter once it has cooled down and then give it all a good mix. This is going to be a delicious, nutty, chocolatey base for the cheesecake. Of course, you don't have to brown the butter. I just do that to take it to the next level. You can just use regular melted butter if you like. Anyway, once that's done, we're going to pour it out into our cake tin and then you're going to spread it around evenly. Make sure you spread it around evenly. You can use your spatula for this. You can use a spoon for this. You can even use your fingers. Just do whatever is easiest. Once you're done with that, pop it in the freezer to chill for about 15 minutes. The next thing I'm going to do is take about 100 ml of heavy whipping cream and then whip that to soft peaks. We're going to be adding this to the cheesecake to lighten it up. Also, I'm doing this first so that I don't have to wash the beaters when I make the filling. It's a little hack. Anyway, once the cream has been whipped to soft peaks, it's time to get on to our cream cheese filling. So we're going to use about 400 grams of cream cheese and give it a good whipping with the electric whisker. Now you need to make sure that your cheese is at room temperature. I cannot stress this enough. Room temperature, not from the fridge. Once that's nice and smooth, it's time to add the other ingredients and I'm adding in about 200 grams of peanut butter, all natural and unsweetened. I'm also going to add in some vanilla extract, about a teaspoon and stevia to taste. You can also use a powdered sweetener, no problem and then give that all a good mix. Now folks, you can also use a powdered sweetener, no problem and sweeten it to taste. Make sure that you taste the filling once it's all whipped in. Anyway, once you're done whipping that, it's time to fold in the cream. So pour in that cream that we whipped to soft peaks and then fold it all together to get a nice creamy mixture. 
be gentle with this you've taken some time to put some air into that cream and you don't want to deflate the entire mixture but make sure everything is well incorporated once that's done get your base out of the fridge and pour in that cream cheese filling make sure you smoothen it out you can give it a little tap tap and a little shake shake to make sure it's all well settled and then you pop it in the fridge for at least six hours now we're going to make our chocolate ganache and i'm going to take 100 ml of heavy whipping cream and put it in a saucepan i'm going to put the saucepan on the stove and bring it up to a simmer meanwhile i'm going to chop up about 80 grams of dark chocolate now i'm using lint 85 but you can use 100 percent chocolate if you get that where you live anyway chop it up put it in a bowl and let's get back to that cream once your cream has reached a simmer just pour it over the chocolate and then give it all a good mix and you will see a lovely chocolatey ganache being made of course you can add some extra stevia to taste if you want it sweeter you can also use some powdered sweetener no problem anyway once everything is mixed well set it aside and let it cool once that's cooled it's time to finish the cheesecake and i put it in cling film because i left it in my fridge overnight anyway pour that ganache over the cheesecake and then spread it around you can use your spatula or you can like i am doing try and be all fancy and well i don't know if this was smart or stupid but hey i got the job done i turned the thing round and round and i shook it around without breaking and destroying anything and managed to cover the entire top of it with the chocolate ganache anyway then pop it in the fridge to chill for another hour or two the longer the better all right folks it's the moment of truth where i pop open that spring form pan and i'm using a damp hot cloth to just loosen the sides a bit so just wrap it around for a second or two get rid of the cloth and snap open that cheesecake spring form pan and oh yes everything went well i didn't destroy it it looks good and yahoo it's come out quite all right if you ask me now it's time to cut into that cheesecake and a little tip is to dip your knife in hot water then wipe it clean and cut the cheesecake and then you're supposed to dip it again and clean it but i forgot to do that so i dirtied up my cheesecake a little bit but nothing that a uh, well a tissue paper can't fix anyway our cheesecake is done i've cut out a slice and it's not a complete disaster it looks really delicious and i can't wait to taste it anyway enough jibber jabber time to taste all right folks so it's time to taste our peanut butter cheesecake and boy oh boy this was one of the hardest recipes for me to film and execute properly and i made quite a few mistakes as you may have noticed but hey you know what my wife is the dessert queen i generally make the savory stuff so this was a good learning experience for me a good challenge and there's so much information i need to share with you guys so please make sure you go to headbangerskitchen.com to get the written recipe with the macros and all the additional information that i want to share with you but i am going to tell you this right here this cake is about 5000 plus calories so you got to eat it in real moderation but anyway enough jibber jabber time to taste let's dig in I don't know what to say. I just got to eat another bite. Pure sin. I mean, you're going to have to cut this cake into 16 slices and lock away what you're not going to eat because wow this just i could eat the entire cake that's 5000 calories in one sitting that brown butter in the in the base just takes it to the next level and it's if you think about it it's just peanut butter cookie base peanut butter filling and chocolate on top and i normally hate chocolate in cheesecakes but here 
everything works in perfect harmony anyway i hope you guys are going to make this peanut butter cheesecake and of course take a picture tag me on instagram share it with me on facebook and i guess i will see you on the next episode of headbangers kitchen cheers and keep cooking ladies and gentlemen cooking is a skill and we all make mistakes along the way but don't make the mistake of not subscribing to headbangers kitchen and hitting that bell icon so you get notifications we have new videos every monday and every thursday so make sure you don't miss a single recipe